Lost World Museum, where we ask the provocative and important question, where do we come from, apes, aliens, or Adam? And today we're going to do an unboxing of a stone sock. And you're probably wondering, what? What is that? What's a stone sock? Well, I'll explain in just a second. But before we get started, let me just share with you what we're going to be talking about is a little bit of limestone. This is limestone from Glen Rose, Texas, and right just uh, outside of, uh, just south of Dallas, and this was in the Paluxy River. It's beautiful. When limestone is wet and the sun is shining on it and there's a lot of it, it just like glistens almost. I love the limestone. Now, one of the things that you find in limestone in the Paluxy River or around the Paluxy River is dinosaur prints. That's right. You find dinosaur prints and this is one from uh, the state park, Dinosaur Valley State Park in Glen Rose. And this was taken from, now this is not actually the fossil itself or impression that was hardened in limestone itself, but it was, um, it was a mold and a cast that was done on it. And check it out. That is the real deal. This was done by professional paleontologists two years ago. And there you go. So that's limestone. Well, the question is, how long does limestone take to form? Now, you don't have to be a geologist or a genius to consider this. Cement. We think of cement as something altogether different than any of the sedimentary rocks that were formed, what? tens, hundreds of millions of years ago through a process that took tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, or millions of years in order to be able to harden? Case in point, when this dinosaur made this impression, it was dinosaur mud. Welcome, guys. Appreciate it. Walter and Modern, appreciate it. Glad you're here. This was impressed in limestone mud. It is approximately an inch deep here, this one. I have measured dinosaur tracks personally, not in the same area, but close by to where they were 13 inches deep. You know what that means? That means that limestone didn't accumulate over hundreds of thousands of years. It was mud. That doesn't mean that it was hard, then became soft again through some process necessarily. That means that that limestone was brought in was mud, and then it hardened. Welcome, Dale. So, if that's the case, then we can look at cement, which part of the cement has got lime in it, friends. Same kind of situation going on here. Again, we don't have to be a, a geologist, a paleontologist, to try to piece this thing together. If there was 13 inches of depth and a dinosaur, this was a heavy dinosaur, dinosaur print, There and, and therefore that mud had to be there, brought in. I mean, where do you get 13 inches or more of limestone covering an entire, and I mean, I'm not even going to give you the expanse because I'm not even sure how to quantify it, but it's not just one small little area. Could... And this is where I'm going to make the leap here, okay? Could the limestone have been brought in during that worldwide flood of 4,400 years ago? The slurry that would have had to have been created was profound and it had to be brought in. That's my, that's my thought. Is there another explanation for it? I would love to hear it. And I don't mind hearing it from an evolutionary standpoint to understand how 13 inches of limestone mud over a vast area gets put down. And here we, here we go. You ready? Where a dinosaur steps in it and then somehow it gets preserved and hardened. Now, the idea is, whether it be evolution or creationist, is that it gets filled over. And so it doesn't, it doesn't deteriorate. Look how beautiful that is. It doesn't deteriorate the footprint until it gets a chance to harden. Now, from a creationist model, you've got the moon affecting tides and you've got sediment coming over this 
very rapidly, maybe 12 to 24 hours, filling this in before it gets a chance to deteriorate. And these things can deteriorate very quickly. Try it sometime at the beach uh, or somewhere where there's rain and mud going on and see just exactly how long your footprint lasts. It may last a day or two, or it might not. <laughs> then it has to harden over thousands of years, hundreds of years. How long does cement take to harden? Just a couple of days, a day, and there you have it. What I'm gonna show you next is something that was in Steamboat Springs, Nevada. In this box right here, and I hope I got the right box. I got three boxes I'm gonna show you guys I still, that I still have left. <laughs> Let me start opening this, okay? And let's take a look inside. I'm hoping that this is this limestone sock, okay? I really wish my history teacher in high school. Well, you know what, Sonia? It doesn't take somebody with a degree, and I'm proof of that, to be able to start investigating this for themselves. And thank you, by the way, the three people that gave this a thumbs up, I really appreciate that. Ooh. Okay. I'm going to just move us back just a little bit, guys, so we can get as much in the picture as possible. This might take a little bit. No, maybe not. Extremely fragile on here, so I'm going to be real careful with this one. Most of the stuff that I get are pretty robust, but this one not so much. Okay. I love these unboxings because I have only seen pictures of it. I've not seen it. So what I have in this box here is a sock that was found at one of these mineral springs in Nevada. In all intents and purposes, it's calcite. It's like limestone. Typically, we don't think of limestone as something that is forming today. Maybe not in the traditional sense. Again, I'm not a geologist. But um, in principle, look at this, extremely fragile, he says on the cover. Extremely fragile. All right, I'm going to take his word for it and, t and just consider that this is extremely fragile, okay? Okay, this is the sock. Appreciate your patience. I think it's going to pay off. All right, let me get this a little bit closer now. There we go. Okay. All right, in this package right here, and I am going to take my time if you don't mind, okay? Kind of excited to see what this is going to look like. And by the way, just as a way of um, doing a real quick commercial, we have a video that's doing actually quite well. Um, you may want to check it out. It's about the Newton Bell, 
and we have that on our channel. We just uh, published it or released it yesterday, and it is about a bell that was found, allegedly found in coal. What's a bell doing in coal? And what's a sock doing in what looks like limestone? Because you think of limestone as something that is ancient, you know, but may not be as ancient as we think it is. And again, there are two worldviews that are vying for your attention. One is the evolutionary worldview, long ages of, you know, of, of, of geological time. And the other is the creationist model which is basically the science of Genesis. So, all right. I know on social media and whatnot that the kind of time that I'm taking to do this is excruciating, but I have to do it because he said it's extremely fra fragile. Yeah, please do. Check that video out. I think you'll enjoy it. I interviewed the guy that owns the Newton Bell, um, and he tells the entire story. Oh, this is interesting. This is interesting. You can see the part of it peeking out there. And again, for those of you just joining us, we're taking a look at a sock <laughs> that was found at a mineral springs in Nevada. And I'll do a whole video on it itself. <laughs> that may be right there, a per-mineralized sock. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna let you hear it, okay? Listen, I'm gonna put this right up to the microphone. No, it's not a dirty sock, actually. <laughs> oh, let me just turn the camera around. It's not a dirty sock. What it's showing is that, look, evolutionists cannot show you that limestone takes a long time to form. They can't actually demonstrate it. From a creationist perspective, they're saying that limestone forms very quickly. And Evolutionists or uh, modern geologists will tell you that it can it can form quickly as well too, but it's extremely old. Well, they weren't there. There's an assumption there, and you know all the science that supposedly uh, backs that up. Um, there's certain assumptions that are being uh, that are questionable. Others feel that they're not questionable. They're they're absolutely 100% valid and uh, almost beyond reproach. But from a creationist perspective, we look for modern day examples of the conditions that were necessary in order to create the fossil record and the fossils and the strata. And we see, and what we're seeing here, to some is just a dirty sock. To some, this shows that when the right minerals that, and look how close Yep, there you go. All right, that's what we have for today. We're gonna have, we got two more boxes and uh, we're gonna be opening those too shortly. Just not today. Those of you that want the uh, report, uh, the three top reasons why Noah's Ark must still exist, the link will be in the description there. And uh, for those of you that wanna 
Check it out, Museum Alerts. MuseumAlerts.com. I'm always not sure which way to put it, so I'm going to put it both ways. And again, it's in the description. Also, too, if you want to be alerted when we do something like this, you know, subscribe, obviously, and hit the bell at the highest possible level. Or you can, in the description, just text me, and I'll be happy to text you back and say, hey, Mary, hey, Bob, welcome to the text group. And I texted 265 people before we went on live at 315 509-9075. Yeah, I'm going to check and see if this is thoroughly permineralized. I have a feeling that it is. The gentleman that I bought this from is a, a, a geologist, and he is um, much smarter than I am, and he's the one that procured this, so very good. Well, Water Life, I appreciate the, uh, the vote of confidence. And listen, guys, you take it easy. And if there's anything that we can do, answer any questions, feel free to email us, uh, contact us. Um, we're at uh, lostworldmuseum at gmail.com. And uh, thank you for joining our live today. Thanks for your time. Really cool content. I'm glad you enjoyed it, Sonia. We'll have more to come. Again, we asked a provocative, important question. Where did we come from? Was it apes, aliens, or Adam? And we'll see you next time.